Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, we're going to introduce the NCWBM with a short video of how to use it, where the adjustments are. And um, we'll start off with the, uh, the guide, the adjustable guide for the carpet and for the wide border tape that you're going to sew on the carpet before it's flipped over and glued on the underside. Um, what you, the most important thing with the guide is that there are two areas that you do the adjusting for. This part of the guide, which I'll get this carpet out of your way, this part of the guide is where your carpet is going to go, butt it up against. And, you, and these two screws adjust how deep you're going to let your carpet go in based on how much wide tape you wish to, sh to sew. Of course, the further to the right you go, the more wide tape you're going to sew on, show on the carpet. This is adjustable up to seven inches. You can have actually seven inches of wide border tape showing on your carpet. Okay, so the other guide is for your tape. And um, a lot of people say, well, geez, what am I going to do with the roll of tape? You're not going to do nothing with the roll of tape. Just what you're going to do is, let's say you're doing a 9 by 12 you'll cut off maybe... 14 foot of tape, cut it off, say this is the 14 foot, and you cut it, and, and you sew the tape that you're using, or tapestry if you will, until it gets underneath the feed wheel. At that point, then you would put the carpet on. And then you would start your carpet. Okay, that's very important. You don't want to put the carpet in first and then you're wasting carpet without sewing a wide border tape on it. Okay, um, then you would take the carpet that you're going to use, you'd butt it here, and you would sew. And let me just get a small piece of carpet. Excuse me one second. Here we go. We're going to bring it right up to where the needle is. And you just lay your, your tape here, and she will basically go to the guide. You don't have to hold it back, pull it over. And of course, the guide is how deep you want to have your stitch from the edge of the tape. A quarter of an inch is more than enough. And the adjustment for that is right here. These two screws. Now let's say you get an exceptionally thick, thick piece of carpet that you're going to put a wide border on. And if this is rubbing on the carpet, you merely can you just bend it up a little higher and kind of put a plier here and just angle it up a little little higher so it's not dragging too hard on the carpet. And then, then of course, you, do your, you apply your wide border. It's that simple. There's no skill required. You don't have to hold back on the tape. And, and she will lay out your tape on whatever you're going to sew it on, flat as a pancake. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to take a look at is uh, the oiling. Uh, and um, it's very important that you keep your unit cleaned and oiled. Um, it's quite easy. Uh, you're going to put a few drops of oil up here, and this, this oils the upper main shaft for you. Another area that you want to put a drop of oil in is in the needle bar guard. One drop. That's good. And that takes care of the top of the machine. Now we go to the bottom. Uh, what I like to do is I like to actually open the door. Let me get this out of our way. I'm sorry. Open my door. And I'll pull this over here so you can see it. And you'll see put some light on the situation. And you'll see your uh, main shaft with your connections. I can't go any further than that unless I bring my needle up. And then we'll go a little further. And you can see your connections here. One, two, and three. You're going to do that again. I can't see anything with the door open closed. You know what? I can't open it anymore, Mal. Oh, shit. Because right. it won't allow me to open it anymore because I'm... Um, let's, you tell me when you are Do it again. Just do it slow where you're connecting it. Okay, and I'm going to take my oil can, I'm going to oil here, here, and here. You can also go from the top. Yeah, do it one more time. I'm going to oil on this connection, over here, the third connection, 
drop here and drop here from the top and there is a little connection down here on the bottom put a drop on that and we're done and, and this latch opens and closes to lock this in um, any other areas to oil yes it doesn't have to be done every day but once in a while I like to put a drop of oil on this connection right here just a drop and uh, that's basically it um, if you look on the left hand side of the machine let me turn this out of the way so you can see a little better here we go light on it you'll see there's a protective guard here and there is a connection right here I put a drop of oil in and over here where this piece of white felt is and what that does is it oils the main shaft that drives the feeder up and down oils that cam so if you put oil on the wicking which is next to it fine and that's it and you should do that daily and you just do it once daily it doesn't matter how many hours you're going to use it and when you're done, the most important thing is to take your air hose and blow everything out from the bottom. Blow it right out. Um, next would be threading the machine. Um, the machine uses two threads. Um, we prefer to use the uh, BT-207. It's available in different colors, but it's really unimportant because you're not going to see that thread because once you sew your wide border tape on, you're going to fold it over and tuck it underneath your carpet. So you're never going to see what, what thread you use. So if you have any threads that uh, you've got laying around that you want to get rid of, now's the time to do it. Uh, BT-207, it, it will work with a, a, a Tex-138 also if you wish to use it. Okay. Now, let's, um, as far as maintenance goes, this machine is virtually indestructible. Um, what I would suggest you do is after maybe a week's worth of work, I would put a new needle in. So you got a nice sharp needle and an eye that's not all scratched up from the cement and the carpet backing. Um, other than that, you have a lifetime of, 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 of a great unit. It will just, just made to work. There's very, very little on the unit that can break down, uh, providing you keep it cleaned and oiled. Um, you want to show them the threading? Yeah, jeez, I'm sorry, I forgot all about that. It's a good thing I got my son to remind me. Okay, let's, uh, you know, let's make it easy. We're going to do the top thread first, but part of what you're threading is hidden by this guard. So I'm going to remove this guard so when I thread it, you can, you'll can, you see exactly you, how it's done. Let's uh, cut the thread, we'll remove it, and we'll put our spool of thread on, make sure your sock is over the spool of thread, comes up here, here, and I go in the handle so that when we're working, the two don't tangle up. We'll go into the first tunnel, we'll call this the uh, Lincoln Tunnel, over here. We'll go in between the tension discs, pull them down, and underneath the pins. Hold on. There's a pin here, underneath it, and the pin to, to the left where my thumb is. Got it. This, these two pins keep the thread in the tension. And then we come on over here. We go through here. We go in between the tension discs from the bottom up all the way around and underneath the pin and then we come back then as we go over to the left side you'll see there's a guide here with two holes in it you should be better to use the outside hole or the hole closest to you um, it minimizes the chance of the thread slipping behind here ok 
okay? And then we come on over to this guide and we go from the top down, go under here, pull some thread off and we go from the front of our needle into the back, you leave about a five inch tail and you're, you're all set. And when you, you have to, when you sew with this unit, is in, it's important that you have to have a piece of material there so that you can formulate a stitch. Okay? Now we know how to th thread the top and the, the guard, we can put that back on. The guard is just to protect you. Okay, now let's do the looper thread, okay? And uh, to do the looper thread, I'm going to cut this so it doesn't tangle with the looper. We um, put the spool thread on with our sock, as the other one, come up to this hole here, directly down, uh, we'll call this the Holland Tunnel, to this black tube. And we're going to go through that tube, uh, underneath the pin, around, down, into here. So top down on that yeah. tension? Yeah, I'll do it. Let's, let's do it for you, okay? Get this out of the way. We go through the top just like we did with the other one down under this pin and straight down into this guide here. And uh, we go through that guide. <laughs> it's easier just to go through the hole, I guess. And then you go down to the other basically figure where we're going with this. Now we're going to open this up so we can see here. And we go through this tube here. And then we got to go through this tube into this tube from the front in through the back. Let's remove these so you can see. This thing is in your way. It's called the take up. It moves back and forth as the machine turns. Merely turn the hand wheel clockwise until it's moved over and gives you access to the other side. And now we come to the last thing, the thread, which is the looper, which you can see right there. And um, there's a hole behind the looper. Let's put some light on it. How about we take this carpet off so we can open the door more? Um. Okay. Actually, the best thing to do if you want to open the door is take the guide off. Just take the top guide only. You don't even have to remove it. Just take one, one screw out and just loosen the other one. There we go. Now your door is open as far as you'll go. And I'm going to turn the hand wheel clockwise and you'll see as the looper comes back to me you can see the hole there that we're going to go through so let's uh, show you how easy it is to thread you, you this is what you use your tweezer for naturally uh, let me see if I can get this out of here excuse me one second okay that's out now we can thread it I can't see you. There we go. Through the back of the looper. Yeah, there's only one hole opening in the back of the looper. And just push it. And push it in, and then we're going to turn the machine to the left side. And you will see, I'm going to bring the looper out a little bit. Push the thread there through. There it is. Oop, we get up. the thread. And we go through the front of the looper. There's a hole at the end of that looper. I'll bring the looper out as far as I can. And you can see here we go through that, through the hole. 
There we go. Oop. And we take our tweezer. And we're done. You can leave your tail. Five, six inches is plenty. You don't have to leave it more than that. And then I would reconnect my thread up top into my needle. Close my door. And we're done. Hand walk your first couple stitches and you're all set. Yep, but always with the material under it. And that's the story. A uh, great piece of equipment. Give you many, many years of service and make some money for you.